Hi, my question is about the vitamin D. What do you recommend about the study stuff that's coming out? I said, did I plant her and ask for that question? I didn't, but she was psychic, yeah. Vitamin D, there's so much research on vitamin D, not only preventing cancer, but also in the therapy and treatment of cancer. Um, Paul Troyos in Italy has a clinical trial, again, in brain tumor patients. These were patients who had already had multiple surgeries, radiation, chemotherapy. None of the treatments were working for their brain tumors, and he said, well, we're seeing all the stuff about vitamin D, I'm going to put them on high doses of vitamin D. A third of the patients had complete regressions demonstrated on MRI of their tumors. Vitamin D is a differentiating agent. This is the medical term that means it takes the cancer cell and reverts it back to a healthy cell. Remember that cancer cells aren't foreign invaders. They're your own cells who lost their set of instructions about how to be good adults, to grow up and take their job as a brain cell or a breast cell or a pancreatic cell. They're acting like teenagers, partying all the time and getting into trouble. So we want to give them that set of instructions to differentiate them, to give them their adult jobs. And vitamin D is a great way to do that. There's breaking news in the scientific literature right now about vitamin D and breast cancer. Vitamin D has been shown to be a selective aromatase um, modulator, enzyme modulator. What this means is, um, just show of hands, anybody on an aromacin, aromatase blocker in the room? Just a couple of people. Um, aromatase is an enzyme that takes, in your fat cells, that takes um, androstadione, which is an androgen, and converts it to estrogen. So these uh, aromatase blockers are drugs that are designed to help fight like breast cancer or other hormonal cancers by blocking the new development or new production of estrogen through this aromatase um, enzyme. The problem with these drugs is that it blocks aromatase globally throughout the whole body, including in the bone. And in the bone, you need aromatase to have small amounts of estrogen signals to protect your bone density. So these drugs are associated with bone symptoms. Vitamin D blocks aromatase in breast tissue and in fat tissue, but not in bone tissue. So vitamin, yeah, we, we may see, what we may see is the development of vitamin D as a drug. They may take it away as a supplement. That might happen. In this country, we would fight that. We wouldn't let that happen. But we'll, we'll just watch and see what happens, right? But it does mean that vitamin D can be used to protect bone density while you're on an aromatase inhibitor. Or if you're earlier in your treatment for breast cancer and you're on tamoxifen, and you know that when you finish your couple of years of tamoxifen, your doctor's going to switch you to aromacin or one of the other aromatase inhibitors, you could be using vitamin D during the tamoxifen to get that effect at blocking aromatase so that you're getting sort of a double whammy in terms of controlling estrogen. Um, vitamin D is also a, a selective estrogen receptor modulator. So it fits onto the estrogen receptor alpha, but it doesn't turn on es any estrogenic effect. It down-regulates the expression of the receptors as well. So it looks like the basic science that we have on vitamin D for breast cancer is getting stronger and stronger with many mechanisms of action for fighting breast cancer and other cancers as well. Plus. It's anti-inflammatory. And you know how we talked about we want to get rid of these enzymes. I think Marilyn uh, Mariposa was uh, making a comment about COX-1 and COX-2. These are some enzymes that make, when you have the bad fats in your system, the omega-6 fats, these are the enzymes, COX-2 and LOX is another one, that take these fats and make them into the inflammatory chemicals. Well, after there are the inflammatory chemicals, there's a little known enzyme down here um, called prostaglandin dehydrogenase, prostaglandin H dehydrogenase. It breaks down the inflammatory chemicals. Guess what it needs in order to work? Vitamin D. So most of us are walking around vi very vitamin D deficient. And taking vitamin D, getting your blood level of vitamin D up to a level we'll talk about in a minute, can help get rid of the inflammatory chemicals by breaking them down when we do make them. Vitamin D is also essential for regulating your blood sugar. So if you haven't yet, ask your physician to measure your vitamin D level. There are two different tests. There's vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. You want vitamin D3. It's also called a 25, the number 25, hydroxy, or in chemistry you would just write OH, vitamin D3. Now, 
that can easily be confused by a, with a 125-hydroxy vitamin D2. You don't want that test. That's not the one that responds to time in the sunlight and supplementation. It's not the cancer-fighting one. So if, you, if the doctor runs both of them, that's fine, but the one you want is the 25-hydroxy vitamin D3. Now, reference ranges. The reference range says it needs to be above, they keep upping it. I think it's up to 35 right now. So if you're above 35, you're okay from the doctor's perspective. But you don't have a passing grade from me yet. If you look at the studies on cancer so far, it looks like the blood level that we are shooting for is somewhere between 60 and 80 on your vitamin D3. So if you run your test and then you get a call from the doctor's office that says your D is fine, say what was the actual number? Because it will be fine over 35 from the doctor's perspective. But if you really want these benefits, you want to shoot for that 60 to 80. Now, vitamin D is fat-soluble vitamin, so there is some toxicity. That toxicity begins at 150 on your blood level. So if you're shooting for 60, there's a large margin of safety. When you get to 60, you're still far enough away from 150 that it's very unlikely you're going to hit 150, which is the toxicity level for vitamin D. And then I would see a practitioner to get recommendations for your vitamin D or talk with your doctor about it. if you're taking vitamin D as a medication or as a supplement, go back and repeat your vitamin D test in two months and make sure that it was enough supplementation to get you to that particular level, the 60 to 80.